everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video this morning. I really hope you're doing well. Now we're going to be looking at what is currently happening, but we also want to talk about that first system we're likely to see. So there could be an increase in moisture in parts of the South Caribbean that moves uh, toward the West and we could certainly see development in the Eastern Pacific basin just after that basin's hurricane season officially begins so we're going to be talking about it we'll be looking at what models are showing and we'll also be looking at some environmental factors as well really the sea surface temperatures because they are so warm right now in the eastern pacific but looking at the north atlantic on the infrared satellite imagery much isn't really happening a couple clusters of thunderstorms here and there as we head into the Caribbean, uh, there is some activity moving through parts of the Lesser Antilles, so there could be some additional showers today, but this morning for many areas it is pretty sunny and we do see that blob in the South Caribbean within the vicinity of Panama. As we take a look at the rainfall forecast for today, we can see all of these yellow and reddish shadings, orange shadings as well, across parts of the North Caribbean, the uh, Leeward Islands which includes Anguilla, St. Martin, St. Barthelme, St. Kitts and Nevis, Seba, St. Eustatius, Montserrat, and even Antigua, Barbuda. Pro uh, probably some spots in Guadeloupe and Dominica as well could experience some shower activity today. Potentially some decent showers, but uh, going to Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Grenada, Barbados, and even parts of Trinidad, Tobago, and the ABC Islands, much is not expected. And again, there is that dust moving in the Saharan dust, which has been blanketing the eastern islands. Then for areas such as Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, parts of Cuba, the Bahamas, uh, and even the Turks and Caicos Islands, there could definitely be some showers and thunderstorms around in some areas. Then as we head to the South Caribbean, we also see that it gets a little bit colorful there. Offshore Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, but uh, further north, much not expected. We're not seeing those very colorful shadings to indicate that there could be some substantial rainfall in the area. But then northern South America is pretty colorful. Some of those pink, purple shadings popping up and that could indicate rainfall amounts today probably up to three and a half or four inches within some areas and that could most definitely result in flooding. All right, now we want to go ahead and talk tropics and so we're going to be looking at what models have to show kickstarting with the GFS. So the GFS, uh, the global forecast system, has been expected that we could see development in the eastern pacific so this map may be a little bit complex but i'll try to break it down as best as i can so those green or even those spots of yellows that you see popping up that's just representative of the precipitation the moisture around and then we've got the time up there the forecast time and you're seeing those black squiggly lines all around your screen now those lines are called isobars they're lines that join areas of equal pressure now when it comes to development what we're looking for is those black lines being in a circular manner and the value that you see decreasing but not just that if those circular lines get more tightly packed that indicates a steep gradient and usually a stronger or intensifying system so let's see what gfs has to show there we have the time as we head into this weekend going to early next week we see all that moisture moving from the south caribbean over into the eastern pacific and then we see that l that low pressure system forms offshore nicaragua and look at how quickly gfs is showing intensification look at how uh many of those pressure lines are there those isobars so gfs is expected that we could see something rapidly form and intensify as we're going to be heading to the early and middle part of the week that could be very close to the coast of the central american territories now other models have been hinting at development within the similar time frame here such as the euro for example look at this increase in moisture offshore central america in the eastern pacific and this is for tuesday may 14th also that system moving across parts of the southeastern u.s but then the icon model is also showing a lot of moisture within the area so there could certainly be development and if we should look at the ensemble members from both gfs and euro 
we're definitely seeing that they are indeed expecting development. So how they work is there are different uh, runs of the model, different runs of the GFS model, for example, with slightly varying conditions. And that basically means that if there is a large cluster of them, then it is more likely that we could actually see something form because there is more agreement that even with some, you know, slight variation of uh, conditions in the atmosphere, there may still be some sort of development. So this is for Thursday of next week, the 16th of May. And on the GFS model here, we're seeing all these L's representing that low pressure uh, system expected to form. As we head on to the Euro model now, some of these Euro members are actually showing a potentially stronger system. So there we can definitely see that, you know, there is some agreement, there's that consensus that, hey, we could most certainly have development take place next week. And the Eastern Pacific hurricane season begins on Wednesday, the 15th of May, two weeks prior to the official start of the Atlantic hurricane season. Now, seeing that we could have development in the, uh, the Pacific Basin, there is a different list of names to, uh, for tropical cyclones over there. And the first name on the list is Aleta. So as soon as next week, we could most certainly see Aleta form. Now, uh, as it relates to conditions out there, the sea surface temperatures are well on their way. Take a look at this. 30, 31 degrees Celsius in the Pacific and at the minimum. Uh, tropical cyclones usually require, say, 26, 26 and a half degrees Celsius. So temperatures are well supportive of development and even rapid intensification. So it's not uh, something that is uh, implausible that the GFS model is showing. It is most definitely possible. However, other environmental conditions have to be supportive of that actually taking place. So... Yeah, it's definitely looking as though we could start to see things ramp up in the tropics and in the Atlantic basins also getting warm. Matter of fact, those sea surface temperatures are well above average right now in the Caribbean, very warm. The Gulf of Mexico, especially the Bay of Campeche, definitely getting there and out in the main development region as well. But there is some Saharan dust around, so that's kind of helping to keep things quiet offshore Africa uh, in the main development region right now. So let's look at the forecast. As we're going to be heading throughout this week, the dust will continue to move across the Caribbean islands. It is already blanketing some of the islands in dense quantities and high concentrations. And with that, you know, allergies have been triggered, respiratory conditions, and even skin, eye, and throat irritation. So uh, it's best to stay indoors and hydrated as best as you can, guys. It may be difficult, but, uh, you know, eventually this dust is going to be moving out. But it should persist across parts of the Caribbean as we head through much of the week. And it should reach areas such as Jamaica by uh, Friday going to Saturday as well. And, you know, it's still going to be around for the Lesser Antilles, but should decrease in quantity. And it will also continue to affect northern South America such as uh, parts of Venezuela and the Guyanas. So that is it for this updated video. That is pretty much what I wanted to share with you. Again, we could see development offshore Central America in the Eastern Pacific as we head into next week. Models are certainly hinting at that. And sea surface temperatures could definitely allow for rapid intensification once other environmental conditions are favorable. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. And I do hope you found this video to be very informative. However, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I get the chance to do so. And remember to always be weatherwise.